We have plenty of options these days for a CMS, maybe even too many options, but one thing that they don't always give is the ability to have flexibility and have full control with your data and how you define that. Where this is just a simple example, but what if I want to make sure that I have full control over how I define everything, as well as how it communicates through all the different services like authentication, so that I know exactly what's going on and I don't have to worry about different integrations between services that don't necessarily know how to communicate with each other. So we're going to see how we can use AppRite, where they have all these different services built in to easily build a blog with our own custom database, and we're going to see how we can do that in an Astro app. Now this video is sponsored by AppRite, so head over to AppRite.io to sign up for your free account so we can get started. So to get started, we're going to use Astro as our framework for building this website. And I'm just going to start off with a shell of a website. It just has a little bit of layouts and styles, just something that makes it easy for me to show this on the page. But if we start to look at the code, we can see that it just has two pages currently defined where I have my home page. And again, it's just a shell. And then we have this new post page, which includes a form and some inputs where it's going to be how we're going to take the data to create a new post. Now, ultimately, when we submit that form, we want to be able to send that data somewhere. And we're going to use an AppRite database. So I'm going to head over to AppRite.io, where this is your time to create a new account if you don't have one. But I'm going to click Get Started, and I'm already signed into my account, where we can see that I already created an Astro blog earlier. But we can see that if I go ahead and click Create Project here, it's going to give me the options to create a project name. So I'm going to call that My Blog, and I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now, as far as region goes, it looks like we have the option of Frankfurt right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create. But we can see that then we're going to be landed inside of our AppRite dashboard where we have a few options, including how we can add a platform. And that's exactly what we're going to do first, where we're going to go ahead and select add a web platform. And I'm going to, again, just call this my blog. But we can see that we now have the host name option. Now, this is going to be wherever your blog is going to eventually be deployed. And for now, I don't have that yet. And we don't necessarily need to actually put localhost because it kind of works by default. But let's just put localhost for now just so that we can get past this. But remember, when you're ready to deploy, you need to make sure you update that host name inside of your project. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next where now it's gonna start walking us through how we can actually get started with the SDK, where here we have NPM install app, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that. And if you wanna learn how to actually provide a copy experience like this, make sure you check out my video linked above. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that inside of my terminal where we can see I'll go ahead and install the app rate dependency. And we're also gonna get the option to start to import our client where I'm gonna go ahead and copy that as well. Where the way that this is going to work is we're going to create an app right client, which is how we're going to interface with the services throughout the application. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to create a new folder under my source called lib. I'm going to also call that appright.ts, where inside I'm going to paste that client code. Now going back through that walkthrough, I'm going to go ahead and click next, where it also gives us the ability to initialize our SDK. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well. Similar to before, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in where we can see that we have our new client set up. We're going to then set our endpoint and our project for that client. But I'm going to also export this client so I can import this inside of anywhere I want inside of the application. Now, one thing to know is that this endpoint is currently my endpoint, and that's probably going to be common for anyone using AppRite Cloud. But if you're self-hosting, it might be different. But then we can see that I have my project ID where we can see later how we can actually get this from the dashboard. But generally speaking, this is all you're going to need. I recommend putting this in a environment variable just so it makes it easy to swap around if you need to do anything in the future. But back inside of the walkthrough, let's go ahead and click next again, where we're ready to go. So I'm going to go to the dashboard where once we're dropped into the dashboard, we can notice a few things where we don't have anything going on right now. And that's expected because it's a new project. But also, I just want to make note that you can copy that project ID right at the top here or under your settings tab. But for now, we have our project ready to go. And the first thing we want to do is create a new database. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the databases tab where we can see that I'm going to go ahead and click create database where I'm going to give my database a name. I'm just going to call this again, my blog, because it's not very different from anything else of how I'm establishing this content right now, but you can name it whatever you want. You can even enter a custom ID, but I'm going to just let this be randomly generated for my purposes. I'm going to go ahead and click create. Now we can see that the blog has been created or my blog database has been created. We can even see again, we can copy that ID from the top, similar to any other service mechanism that we're going to find inside of AppRite. But what we want to do now is create a collection as the way that it's organized in here is we're going to have our database and our database has different collections, which then has the documents, which is going to be our database entries. So I'm going to go ahead and click create collection. I'm going to name this one post since this one is going to represent all the posts that we're going to submit. I'm going to go ahead and click create for that as well. And then we have our posts database collection. 
So now that we have our database collection, we ultimately want to define what represents a document. And that's essentially going to be the schema. So what different attributes or fields are we going to want available for each of those database entries? So we're going to head over to this attributes tab where we'll see we have this create attribute button where I'm going to first select a string because multiple all of our fields are actually going to be a string, but we can start off with something like the title where I'm going to add it as a lowercase field so that we can reference it as a lowercase field as well. But we can then enter the size and I'm going to enter 255 for that where we can see that we're given a default. We're not going to have a default, but what we want to do is mark it required so that we do require a title. And then I'm going to go ahead and click create. Now I'm going to do that same thing for a couple different fields, including my slug, which I'm also going to make 255 and required. I'm also going to add a content field, which is going to be our actual post content. Now this one is going to be a really high number because you want to consider that this is going to be your blog post, but it's also going to be potentially other things like HTML that might be intertwined within that content for how you're actually saving in the database, which is exactly what we're going to do. So for now, I'm going to add this as 1 million, which is kind of an arbitrary number, but you want to kind of think about what that max would be. So you don't ever run into that limit. Now I don't want to have a default for this as well. I do want to make sure that it's required. I'm going to click create. And then finally, I have one more thing and I want to create an excerpt. So it's a short snippet of what to expect or a preview of the blog post whenever somebody looks at a list of posts. So I'm going to create one more attribute that's going to be my excerpt. I'm going to make that 255, just like the title and the slug. I'm going to make that required and then I'm going to click create where now we have all the fields that we're going to start off with for creating this blog post. And you can really start to define whatever fields that you want for your post, whether that's also in an author, a category, all the different things that make up the content that you want for your site. Now, before we start actually sending data here, we want to make sure that we set up the permissions where by default, nothing is going to have access to any of this data. And to start, we want to make sure that anyone can actually read the data so that we can grab our blog posts and we can dump them into the content. But we're going to take that a little bit further. And we're also going to give any access to the create operation just so that we have a way to test this out until we can add some authentication in a later tutorial. So to do this, I'm going to head over to the settings tab where I'm going to scroll down on this collection until I hit permissions. I'm going to click the plus sign where I'm going to select any and I'm going to add read and cre or create and read and I'm going to hit update and just again to hit this hard we're going to add read so that anything can read the data from this read all of our blog posts but we're also going to mark any as create and you absolutely want to make sure that before this is uh, pushed out to production that you lock this down so not just anybody can create a blog post on your site but now I think we're ready to start pushing data in. So I'm going to head over to the Apparate Docs where I specifically am interested in working with the database product. And more specifically, I want to work with my documents where to start, I want to be able to create a new document so that I can actually push my data into my Apparate database collection. Now, taking a second to look at this snippet, we have a few things that we need to do. Where first, we need to import our databases object, where we're going to create a new instance of a database here. And then we're going to ultimately use that in order to create our document with some other different information that we'll get to in a second. But to start off, we do need to import databases and create a new instance, which is what we'll use inside of the project. So inside of my code, I'm going to start off by importing that databases from AppRite, but then underneath my client, and it's important that you do it underneath your client because you need to pass the client into this new instance of databases, I'm going to go ahead and export that databases instance. But now that I have that databases instance set up, I'm going to head over to my post new page, which includes the form where I'm going to ultimately take this data and submit it to AppRite. So I'm going to import databases from at lib where I have an alias set up for this and then AppRite, where we now have access to debate databases to make those different queries. But before we actually jump into that, we want to do one thing. And whenever somebody actually submits this form, we're not going to use JavaScript to capture that. We're actually going to use the server in order to inspect the request, see if it's a post post request, which is why we have this method of post here on the form, and then ultimately perform the operate request where we submit that data and then do something with the results. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say if Astro, which I'm going to use the Astro object, which has some helper methods on it, the Astro dot request dot method equals post. If that is the case, I'm going to go ahead and get the form data here. And that's where I'm going to be able to send it to operate. Now, in order to get that form data, I'm going to say constant form data is equal to, we're going to again use Astro, but I'm going to await this where it's astro.request.formData as a method. 
Now, the one thing about working with form data is we can't just use it as an object as simple as maybe just a standard JavaScript object. So what we need to do is we need to get all the fields for this. So I'm going to create a new constant called data, which is going to be an object where I'm going to specify all the different fields that I have. So what do we have? We have title, we have a slug, we have our content, and we have our excerpt. But for all of these, what we're going to do is we're going to say form data dot get where we're going to get that field. So for each of these, and I'm just going to paste these in for each where I have my slug, I have my content and I have my excerpt. And just to make sure that this is working, let's go ahead and console log out that data. So back inside of my site, I'm going to go ahead and select new post, which is going to put me on my new post page where I have my form. I'm going to start filling it out, such as my new blog post. And I have some little client side magic going on, just to create a little slug for me, just so that I don't have to do it. But then I'm going to start to fill out my content. I'm going to say, this is my new blog post. And we can see for the excerpt, I'm going to say, just, and he's all some of the ones I was testing with, just so you know, this is a new blog post. And let's go ahead and click submit where we can see we were immediately jumped off to the top of the page because it was submitting to that page. But if I open up my terminal, we can see that I do have that data object logged out to my terminal, including all that information that I just sent along. So that means on the server, we were able to send and capture all that information, which is exactly what we want to now send along to AppRite. All right, so back to the documentation, we're finally ready to actually use this databases instance in order to use this create document method. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this little snippet here. And underneath where I have my data, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in where this create document method is going to return a promise. So let's go ahead and await that. We're gonna even capture the results so that we can actually inspect that. But let's pass that data right through instead of that empty object where we have a few things that we need to fill out now, our database ID, our collection ID, and we have this ID helper that I mentioned before. But what we can do to start off is I'm gonna go ahead and import that from AppRite. But now let's go ahead and get our database ID and our collection ID. Now back inside of the AppRate dashboard, like I mentioned earlier, we're able to get these IDs at the top of these different services, which makes it really easy in order to get. So for my post collection, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, replace this collection ID string with my ID, and then I'm gonna head back to the actual database itself, which is my blog. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that ID, and I'm gonna also paste that in as my database ID. Now, I generally recommend that you store these things as environment variables, not necessarily because they're unsafe too, since these are meant to be used on the web for this particular instance, but it's just easier, especially if you wanna swap databases in the future or you wanna be able to pass this around. It's just not usually a good idea to store these kind of things in code. But for now, for this example, this is going to work and let's see what happens when we do submit this data. I'm gonna go ahead and console log the results so we can actually see something happen. Now back on my new post page, I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the same stuff for something close, my new blog post. It's gonna create my slug. This is a new blog post and cool new blog post. And we're gonna go ahead and click submit. And we can see this time that we have not only the data that we just submitted, we have all the app rate information that comes along with it, including that database collection. We have our created at, which we'll later use as our quote published date. We have the updated, which could also be a modified date, but then we also have the actual ID, which we can use for querying. And we even have the permissions if we need it. But now let's go back and actually look inside of AppRite where I'm gonna go ahead and go to my post collection again. We can actually see that I have that new blog post. I have the other one as well, probably because the request was sent along with when I didn't actually clear that form. But we can see that I have this new blog post just that we submitted, it's a cool new blog post. But this is a little bit of a confusing experience right now. We're not giving any feedback to let somebody know that that was successfully submitted. How would somebody actually know that where now they just have an empty form here? So whenever we have a successful result, I'm going to actually return astro.redirect, where I'm going to pass in a dynamic path of slash posts, where I'm going to pass in the results.slug, which is going to be the successful post that we just created. It's going to pass it to this dynamic path. And if we look at our post right now, we don't actually, oops, we don't actually have that created right now. We're going to create that in a second here. But what that's going to do is it's going to pass us to that page. So let's try that out. Now, if we open back up our browser, we can see that Astro actually already redirected that. And it's because we had still submitted that form data. We never navigated away or refreshed a page or anything like that. So it still was holding onto that form data on that server request. So because it saw that, it still went through and it submitted it and pushed us through to this new page where we can see we have the dynamic path of slash posts, my new blog post. So let's now actually build out that page. Now to do this, we're going to use a dynamic path and inside of pages posts, we're going to add a new file and we're going to use brackets to denote that it is a dynamic path where we're going to add post slug. And I'm going to make sure I tag that as an astro file. 
Now, in order to avoid actually having to write out all the UI, I'm going to go ahead and paste a little bit of HTML content in here where we can see that I just have this layout and a container. I have my article tag. I have some styles, my H1, along with a timestamp and a little bit of content. Where if we look inside of the browser, we can see that it's just some simple templating where we can now query that post from AppRite and we can actually inject it to the page. Now, before we actually make that request, we're missing one key uh, piece of information, and that's going to be this post slug from the dynamic route. And the way that we're going to obtain that is I'm going to destructure this post slug from the astro object dot params, which this is going to include that dynamic information for me, the parameters where I can grab that post slug. And just again, to test it out, let's go ahead and console log that out where we can see if I'm back on my page and I go over to my terminal, I do have that post slug and we can see that it is my new blog post, which correlates to that page that I'm on. So now let's use that information to actually query from AppRite. Now, going back to the AppRite documentation, we're going to use the list documents method, where if we scroll down on this snippet, we can see that we're going to similarly use the databases instance, which we set up before, but this time we're going to use the list documents method. We're going to similarly also pass in the database ID, the collection ID, but one thing we're also going to do, and we're going to see in a second here, is we're going to use this query helper, which is going to help us define how we actually query this data. So let's get started here, where I'm going to go ahead and copy this snippet. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it right under this post slug. Again, I'm going to set up constant results is equal to await databases list documents, since that's going to be a promise as well. And we can see that we need to import databases. So I'm going to import databases from my alias app, right? Where now we need to start to define this database ID and the collection ID. Where if I go back to my new page, I'm going to go ahead and copy that database ID and the collection ID, just like what I was setting inside of my create document method. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in as well. But now let's actually set up this query because what this is going to do is allow us to say, not only do I want to list the documents, which is what this is going to natively do without the query, I want to list all the documents where a particular piece of information matches the value that I send in. And we're going to go ahead and match the post slug to the actual slug of the database instances where that stores that data. Now to start, I need to actually import this query. So I'm going to import query from AppRite. Then I'm going to be ready to go where I don't want to query the title here. Again, I want to query the slug. So I'm going to change this to the slug is equal to my post slug. And let's go ahead and console log out those results. And we can see that actually we get a TypeScript error from this. And what's going to happen is it's not going to think that this always exists. And that's part that's kind of true, where if you go to slash post without the parameter, it might not exist. So let's, before we actually get there, let's say if post slug doesn't exist, we can say return astro.redirect. And let's just go to the homepage for now. But maybe you want to put like a 404 there or something. Or since it's the, the, the slash post without a slug, that probably might go to the homepage anyways, but that's going to cover our case for now. And we can see that TypeScript is happy for this particular instance. But now let's go ahead and console log out the results where if I now head back to my page and I open up my terminal, we can see that I have my results. I have my document and I have my new blog post that it was able to find by this slug. Now, one thing I should mention is if you have multiple documents with the same slug, you're going to get multiple documents here, which could potentially cause a problem. So you want to make sure that you have some kind of mechanism that safeguards this, such as whenever you create a new post, check to see if that slug exists before actually creating the new document so that you can give the author the opportunity to fix that slug to something that's unique. So now that we have these successful results, let's actually do something with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destructure my documents. And what I'm going to do is also create a new constant called post. I'm going to set that equal to constant or documents and get the first item in that array, which is going to be that blog post. And now I have this post available where I can start to swap in the data. I'm going to dynamically add the post title there as well as post title here. I'm going to update the time where this is going to be new date. Where I pass in that post, I'm going to use the created at, and you can probably store this in a new variable. Let's do that. I'm going to say my scroll up a little const published date is equal to new date, the created at, and I'm going to pass that in as my uh, two ISO string, where then for my published time, I'm going to make that published date to locale string. And I hopefully I get that spelled right. But finally, how are we going to actually address this content here? Now, instead of just dumping that on the page as if it were a string, we're going to use this fragment component, which is going to allow us to pass it in as if it's HTML, which we'll get to in a second here because it's not currently HTML, but we'll be able to see that we're going to be able to pass that in as is when we get it directly from AppRite. 
So I'm going to go ahead and replace this content with that fragment where I'm going to say this is going to be my post dot content where I do realize that I did make a mistake here. This is going to be to locale date string. But now if we head back to the browser, we can see that we have my new blog post. We can see that in the new tab as well, but we also have the published date. We even have the post content directly on the page. Now this is working great, but one thing we didn't cover is what if that blog post doesn't actually exist? If I head back to the browser and go to some random slug such as ASDF, we can see that I actually get an error because this created that doesn't exist. And just generally speaking, this blog doesn't exist to actually fill out the page. Now what we can do is we can inspect these documents that come back from AppRay and we can say if we don't find any, let's just redirect away to a 404 because that page doesn't actually exist. So I'm going to say if documents.length is equal to zero and I'm going to say return astro dot redirect where we're going to send them away to the 404 page, which is a default page that exists, which you can customize, but we're not going to get into that here. But let's go ahead and set up that redirect. And we can see like similar before, we already see that we're going to get that 404 page because that slug doesn't exist. And we can test that out post slash ASDF. We can see that was redirected away. Now, fortunately, our post.new does still work because that slug actually exists in the file tree. But now if we go to my, is it new blog post? We can see that we are able to successfully get to that page and see all of our new information. Now, going back to the code for a second, this fragment, I was talking about how we're not actually using HTML right now in order to set this content. What we're doing is we're just simply setting a string. Now, this doesn't really matter for my new blog post because this is just a single line. But I went ahead and submitted a little bit more of a complicated post, which has a lot more content. But we can see that there's no spaces, there's no uh, line breaks, there's no any kind of formatting. And that's because we're just storing this as one big string. And when we try to render it, it doesn't really understand how to render it in a way because we never stored that information. If we head over to the new post page, we can see exactly this, where we just have a simple text area and we're not doing anything with it. We're passing it as a string over to AppRay. So what can we do to make this more rich? And one way is we can make this as if it's a markdown field. And hint, we even have this as, a, I even have this as a label on side of the, cart uh, the content field here where it supports markdown. So let's actually make it support markdown where we can even do things like formatting where I can create my header. I can add things like uh, strong or I can use the emphasis. Um, but let's actually make this support markdown. So to do this, we're going to use the marked package, which is going to give us an easy way in order to convert our content from markdown into HTML. And why do we want to store as HTML? Well, HTML is pretty universally able to be rendered, and it's going to be a little bit easier for trying to make sure that we have a mechanism in place in order to take that information, store it in a way that is recognizable for even for being able to render on a page. And it's just going to be a little bit more future proof. Now you can certainly store it as markdown and trying to do this on the other side of it, you can make Maybe even take it and store it as JSON or something like that. That's really your preference. But for now, I'm just going to use HTML for how I'm going to store this information. But to start, let's actually install the marked NPM package. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go ahead and paste that into my terminal. I'm going to install that package. I'm going to run NPM run dev again. Where one thing just to point out before we actually move forward is Mark does give a warning that this does not sanitize the output HTML. So just to make sure that you're going to be putting checks in place, especially if you're going to be letting users or your visitors actually submit information through here. But now that we have the package installed, let's head back to our editor where I'm going to go back to the new page. And at the top, I'm going to import marked from marked and we can see if we go down to our actual content we're going to use form data.get to still get our content but let's say constant content is equal to where i'm going to wrap this form data with the marked function and we can see that we are getting an error here we do need to pass a string into marked which we're pretty confident we're going to get a string here so let's go ahead and just wrap that but one last thing we need to do is we need to await this because marked is going to return a promise so i'm going to now return this content right directly to this data object. Now heading back again to my new post page, I filled out all this information. I deleted the old post since it wasn't going to be useful for me. So this is basically the same exact information, but we can see that we do have those line breaks that are supposed to be all the different paragraphs, but let's add some more stuff. How about, I'm just going to add some, my cool header on top of this. We can see that let's do things like add some italics. Maybe we can say that, uh, we're going to bold quickly because it did quickly gain the dedicated fan base. 
But now if I go ahead and scroll down and submit this, we can see, first of all, that mechanism works where I was redirected to that new blog post like we set up earlier, but we can see that I do have my cool header that was set up using Markdown. I do have, let's actually move this over for a second, where I do have the formatting of my italics here from using the under uh, underscores, I do also have my quickly word now bolded. So I do now have the capability of using markdown in my content field by just simply adding that marked package. I can even head back over to my app right dashboard and I can go into my post here where if I start to look at the content of this post or the data rather, we can see that I am now storing this all as HTML so that it is able to take that and render it onto the page very efficiently. Now, I think that these blog post pages are looking pretty great. We're able to submit a new blog post. We're able to see that individual post, but we're missing one big thing. If I go to the homepage here, I'm not able to see a list of posts. How is anyone ever going to discover any of these posts? So if I head back over to the app rate documentation, we're going to use that same list documents method that we did before, where this time we're not going to actually pass in a query because we just want to get all the documents that are available inside of that particular collection. So back inside of my code, let's now head over to our index page, which is going to be our home page. I'm going to get rid of the sidebar here, but I'm just going to simply copy some of this stuff over from the post slug page where let's import our databases. Let's import our actual list documents method. We're going to paste that right in. But again, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that query since we no longer need it. All we're interested here is the documents. So as we usually do, let's go ahead and console log out these documents just to see what this looks like. Now, if we head back over to that home page and I refresh the page and we look at the terminal, we can see that now if I scroll up, I actually submitted a few uh, different posts so that we had some data to work with, but we can start to see that we're getting a list of all those posts that are actually available inside of my database collection. So now that we have all those documents and I have three of them available right now, let's actually list these out on the home page. So back inside, I'm going to go ahead and actually rename this to posts just so it's a little bit easier to read for me, but I'm going to create a new unordered list and I'm going to say for each post, I'm going to map through and I'm going to ultimately return a list item. But inside of that list item, let's start off by passing along our H2, which is going to include our post.title. And if we look at the browser, we can see that we have all three of our titles for all of our different posts. So let's start adding some more. Now, for the sake of having something styled and because all this isn't necessarily unique, I'm going to go ahead and just paste in the rest of this snippet where what I did is I created my LI, my list item. I have some Tailwind styles on this, but we can see that we have our post title. We have our new date, which is going to represent the date that this was published, of course, and we have our post excerpt. And the one also thing that we have here is let me break this down is we have an href here, which is going to represent that dynamic path so that whenever somebody clicks this post title, they're going to go to that dynamic path based on the slug. So the way that I did that is I set using template literal tags, I set my href to slash posts and then use the post slug. But once the page reloads, we can see that I now have my posts. They look pretty good uh, dumped out onto the page. We can even see that when we have over, we do have those links. So let's go ahead and navigate to one of them where I have my Futurama post to go back to the home page. I'm going to go to my final space post and we can see that not only do we have our posts listed out, we can go to each and every one of them listed out as a dynamic route. And we have all of our information stored right inside of our app rate database. Now there's one last critical part that we didn't cover here and that's the authentication of it. And of course, right now, anybody can come in here and submit a post if I just push this out to production as is. So the first thing we need to make sure that we lock down the permissions on the collection that we set up, but also how do we actually add authentication? If you head over to spacejelly.dev slash react app right, or go to egghead.io, you can find my new course, Full Stack React with App right, where we go through all this, including authentication with Magic Link and how we can set up granular permissions to control who has access to what, including being able to also delete the documents from the UI. Thanks AppRite for sponsoring this video. And if you want to make it even easier to build beautiful UIs with Tailwind, check out my video where we learn how to use Daisy UI component library to drop in components to our app.